I saw this story and I thought, you know what? This could have happened to me. I mean, the chances are pretty slim, but it could have happened. I have bought something similar for my electric car. I haven't actually used it yet, but I had intended to use it. Maybe it's a good idea that we don't use these things um, because there is a chance they could make your electric car burst into flames and explode. I mean, it's a pretty remote chance, but it is possible based on what's just happened. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. This story is pretty wild, right? An EV charge adapter has exploded moments after the car was plugged in. And this has happened to a Tesla. You know, there's a lot of myths about electric cars. A lot of people believe that EVs set fire to themselves frequently and this is common. The batteries won't last for long and eventually they'll just burn. This is incredibly false. The truth is that electric car batteries are much, much less likely to get involved in a fire, to start to catch on fire, even in a crash, than internal combustion engine vehicles any kind of diesel or gasoline, petrol powered vehicles, they are much safer electric cars. But rarely you get extreme things like this happen. And every so often, one of these outliers surfaces. In this case, it happened in Canada where a charging adapter was destroyed by a short circuit and it was all caught on camera. A Tesla driver was trying to charge his car at a non-Tesla commercial charging station in British Columbia. And to do so, he used an A2Z adapter that allows the charging station to plug into the car. So I have bought some of these adapters, not specifically for this. Oh, I don't live in Canada, obviously, but similar kind of things. And and I bought them, you know, off AliExpress, basically from, from China, just completely unknown brands. Probably is a little bit of risk involved with doing that, I'd say. Maybe I should think twice before I actually use them. When he plugged his charger with the adapter connected to it into the Tesla, there was an arc flash explosion. And you can see it in this image here. Thankfully, the guy was a few feet away from the connection when the explosion actually happened. But he was close. I mean, if he had been closer, this thing could have lit him up. It would, probably would have actually. I mean, you can see here, he's very close to the car himself. And fortunately, he was able to have time to just like launch himself away from the car. He experienced some pretty minor scrapes and abrasions from launching himself into the air in order to avoid, you know, getting burnt. But um, he did escape serious injury. However, his spouse, his wife, was sitting in the front passenger seat and fortunately was unharmed as well. An investigation into the incident found that the charging adapter and the charger itself had issues that led to this kind of flashbang explosion. The adapter was not certified for use in Canada because the standards hadn't been created yet when the unit went on sale. And I had a look at my adapter that I bought, vehicle to load adapter, it's not certified either. So yeah, it's worth considering this guys. In addition, the charger itself sent abnormal voltage into the adapter. When that happened, the arc explosion took place and blew the adapter into multiple pieces. So, I mean, was this bought as well from some sort of dodgy online store? It could have been. Bob Porter of the Vancouver Electric Vehicle Association told the Vancouver Sun that there are risks with third-party things if they aren't approved. They haven't been tested for safety. You don't jerk around with electricity. And yeah, I think he's right. The Tesla owner said that he'd used the same setup though for two years without issue which makes the event a reminder that even supposedly reliable gear can fail suddenly if it hasn't been certified or tested on the right standards. And I guess it was really the combination then of this adapter and the charger itself. Clearly this adapter just wasn't set up to be able to handle any kind of um, short or, or abnormal load. I'm going to guess the charger probably sent the abnormal load and the adapter couldn't react to that. This isn't a major issue though across the industry. It hasn't happened a lot, but I have seen reports over the past 12 months of this happening a couple of times. 
Not the exact same way, but similarly. So it's a good reminder that when things go wrong, they can go very wrong. Here in Australia, people love a bargain. They absolutely love it. Not everyone, but a very large portion of Australians will buy the cheapest, the absolute cheapest version of something, a product. I used to work at Bunnings. It's like a hardware store. And I can tell you from being there while I was at university for a couple of years, I was there for two years, working, I worked in the tool shop. Uh, I can tell you now, most people bought the cheapest version of everything. The cheapest drill, they bought that. They would, they're just like, I don't want what is good. Just give me the cheapest version. The cheapest grinder. Now, not everyone, but most did. So I think you're going to find that in general, a lot of people are going to buy this the cheapest of the cheap stuff on from China and then use it for their EVs, for vehicle to load, for adapters, for these sorts of things. Could end up going badly. And it's something worth considering. I think in this instance, maybe don't buy the cheapest version. Maybe, you know, consider that... Um, something bad could potentially happen. Guys, I use PowerShop for my electricity to charge my EV for free between 12 and two o'clock during the day. I'll put a link in the description. If you sign up with them, you get $170 discount to sign up. Also, my solar and batteries. I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here and I've got a big solar array. So I pay $0 for electricity. That's including charging my electric car. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Some very keen-eyed Tesla owners have spotted the first V4 superchargers in Australia. And what is very interesting is the fact that Tesla is even rolling them out in the first place. Why are they rolling out V4 superchargers when there are no Teslas that can even charge at 350 kilowatt theoretical speeds anyway? Well, actually, there will be. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Now, before I get to the superchargers, the key reason here is because if you look at Tesla's Australian website, it says it has three cars for sale. Hover over the Vehicles tab, you'll see Model 3, Model Y, and Cybertruck. And Tesla has taken more than 30,000 pre-orders for the Cybertruck, which it appears it intends to deliver. It's got full details, Australian specifications, in metric for the Cybertruck on the Australian website now. That's a new tab, a new feature that's been um, just put up within the last couple of days. And within the last couple of days, these V4 superchargers were spotted in Aubrey. Now, the only vehicle that will be capable of utilizing theoretical 350 kilowatt charging speeds, because some V4 superchargers are enabled for them and some are not, is the Cybertruck, which Tesla has advertised it having 250 kilowatt charging capability. But the truth is, it has 350 kilowatt charging capability. And interestingly enough, Tesla has actually split the Cybertruck battery pack in two. It's two different sections or Theoretically, according to engineers, it's four sections rated at 200 volts each, and this enables the battery pack to charge much faster. In fact, Tesla says the Cybertruck battery can charge in 20 minutes from 15% to 85%. 